Hi ladies, it is so great to be with you one more time as we finish up this amazing book called To Change the World by my dear friend Dr. Helen Sullivan. And I can't remember if I showed you the first week in our introduction, um, but I wanted to show you today. She autographed it for me. <laughs> and I got a great picture of, of her and I together when we had our uh, conference during the summertime over in Anaheim, California. And um, I'm holding up my new plaque that I had received. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that when I learn how to the thumbnail because <laughs> I don't know how yet. Someone's going to have to show me. Um, but I can't believe it. This is it. Chapter 9, the last chapter. And I want to say thank you to every single woman who helped us out. And I'm just going to run through them really quickly so um, they can each get their fair credit. And if you haven't seen the video that features them, then you know you missed the chapter. Okay, so chapter one was Shalini. She took care of us when she shared about when times are really tough from Ruth chapter one, verses one to five. And then chapter two was our sister Roseanne. Is God still your everything? And that was uh, focused on Ruth chapter 1, verses 6 to 22. So you can see the pattern. None of the reading was super challenging. Like we had a chapter uh, broken down for us into passages that um, can, can work with these topics. And so, um, you, you know, 10 minutes of reading and another 10 minutes of uh, reading in the book. And um, it was it's really deep stuff that Helen shared extensively from her life. And uh, chapter three was Ruth, um, our sister Ruth, on Ruth. And that chapter was titled From the Inside Out. It was focused on chapter two, verses one to 13. And um, chapter four was Marlo and uh, our sister Marlo up in the high desert. And she shared on boldly breaking barriers. And a great one to share on that because she's had to break all kinds of barriers herself personally. And that was from Ruth chapter two, verse 14 to 16. Um, chapter 5 was by our sister Nancy Stanso out in uh, Marietta, and uh, Nancy's so amazing. She shared on partnership is everything, and I have to say Nancy has been one of the best partners in the gospel that I've ever had, and I love her so much, and she did such an amazing job covering that chapter, and, uh, and I'm going to miss her. As many of you know, she'll be moving um, out to Chicago so that Steve could start his new job, her husband Steve. Um, but I'm going to miss you, Nancy. I hope you get to see this video. Um, chapter 6 was our sister Denise. Discip discipleship is not optional. That was taken from Ruth chapter 3, verse 1 to 18. And I got to say, Denise was the right one to share on that chapter because Denise is very faithful about making sure we get our discipling time, our mentoring time. And not only do I have the honor to be able to mentor Denise, but Denise gives me feedback too. And uh, it's a very special friendship, so I'm really grateful. Um, chapter 7 was our sister Maris. And Maris covered the letter versus the spirit. But I'll tell you what, when it comes to vi doing her video, her video was like top notch. I don't know how to do what she did. She had special effects and extra subtitles and a closing music and opening music. And it was so, so awesome. Talk about the spirit. She showed the spirit of the law which is really all about joy of our salvation having the joy of our salvation and doing everything um, from that spirit okay and then our sister last week santana covered chapter eight god is always faithful and i really believe um, that was taken from ruth chapter four verse nine to twenty two and i really believe santana could have gone uh, longer she could have actually shared for hours about how god has been faithful in her life um, in spite of many challenges, and uh, she's still faithful too to God, and it's amazing. So thank you, Santana. And this week I get to share Kathy Martinez on chapter nine. What will your impact be? Because the book was called to change the world. Oops, can you see it? I'm on the wrong side. There we go. Called to change the world. So are you gonna help change the world? Do you agree that the world is in bad shape right now? Um, you know, some things are great. I love nature. So when I step outside and I hear the birds and I see the trees and I see the mountains over here to my north, you know, I, I just, I love nature. You know, but there's so much going on right now in our world. And we're still recovering in many ways from the COVID era. 
you know, and, um, and it's, it's not, it's not a good time right now. Um, although we can find good because we are believers, you know, we need to be looking for hope and sharing hope all the time. Um, but the chapter nine was, what will your impact be? And I'm just going to share with you, um, a little bit from her first paragraph there. She says, we can read so much. We can hear so much. We can learn so much. But until we make a decision, nothing much changes. And I was like, Helen, dang Helen. <laughs> it's so true though. We can, we can keep on filling our heads with knowledge. We can keep on going out looking for more adventures and experiences and increasing our, our, our skill level that way. But until we get out there and um, make decisions to make changes, it, it doesn't mean anything, you know. And uh, she goes on in the same page and says, what is the one thing that has convicted your heart the most out of everything you've read in this book? What's the one thing? If you think of all the titles I just read and you listened to all the videos, watched all the videos that we shared, nine chapters, you know, uh, what hit you? What stood out to you? What is it that you would like to work on in your own life personally? And this is what she says, completely own that one thing and repent, whatever it is. Completely own that one thing and repent. Second, develop a plan to address that one thing. What is that one thing that you need to address in your life? Change it, or at least implement that plan so that you can change that one thing. And number three, at your weekly discipling times, your weekly mentoring times, Discuss your repentance and your progress too. Don't just be like, oh, woe is me. I blew it. I, I tried to do, I tried to make this change, set my alarm, get up at 6 a.m. every day, and I just blew it. I only got up at 6 a.m. one time this week. You know, so we can go like that, be all, you know, self-pity, or we could say, you know what? I, I did one day this week. Next week, I'm going to do three days. If I can hit five, I'm going to let you know, but I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try. If I can at least check off three days, I'm going to reward myself. How about that? Add that to your plan. Give yourself a little reward and let it be a healthy reward too, not something that sabotages your progress, okay? <laughs> like don't get a big old cake and reward yourself if one of your goals is to lose weight. <laughs> that would be sabotaging your plans, um, your goals. Okay, number four, and when you have mastered it, see, even Helen knew, you're not going to change something overnight. But when you have mastered it, that one thing, go back to step one and choose another one thing and repeat. In other words, we should always be continuing to grow and to change and to learn and to apply the things we learn. Just continuous growth, which is very much a biblical principle. A lot of people don't realize that. And um, I want to jump in because guess what? Chapter 9, I know I shouldn't be trying to show you the page, it doesn't work that way, but chapter 9 is the shortest chapter in the whole book, and I didn't even know it till I got to chapter 9. It's one page long, <laughs> so I'm done covering chapter 9, but I wanted to jump into the appendix because uh, there's a few amazing uh, highlights that she gave us there, and extra um, food for thought, extra studies. For example, she shares about um, how it is a biblical principle to care for widows, and as we know, Naomi became a widow. She was the, um, the, the mature woman in the story. And her, in her widowhood, she not only became a widow, but then she lost her two sons. So she, in, in effect, was all alone. But she had her two daughters-in-law who were married to her sons, and now they were widows too. So three widows in one story. And uh, they were younger. And the one, Orpa decides to go back home to her people. But Ruth clings to Naomi and won't leave her. She stays with Ruth. And uh, many biblical scholars have shared that it was because she had found in Naomi a love for God before she became a widow. And she found in Naomi a, a safety. And uh, she learned about Naomi's God and wanted to, to stay with Naomi's God. So she stayed with her even though Naomi tried to push her away. And sometimes we need to be able to read between the lines and know each other well enough that we can recognize when we're saying, leave me alone. It, sometimes that's not the best thing. Sometimes we need to be with someone else. We need to stay by them and uh, pray for them if they don't want to pray with us. You know, 
whatever it takes, because we are sisters in Christ. And um, she also shared a few stats in the appendix, which I thought was interesting. Um, most widowhood is experienced by women. By the age of 65, according to some statistics that she looked up, um, only 14.9% of men have become widows. But by the age of 65, 45% of women have become widows. So we women are more likely to experience this, um, this pain, this tragedy. Um, okay. And then she goes on and she, oh man, there's so much. You got to read the appendix too. I'm going to skip ahead because I promised that I would keep it short too. Okay. Appendix C. Um, Helen shares 10 striking similarities between Boaz and Ruth and God and us. I thought this was genius. I loved it. I hope you do too. Um, I'm not going to share them all. I'm just going to share, because uh, she shares 10 of them. I'm just going to share, uh, I think I'm sharing six of them. I just circled them. <laughs> okay, so num the one I'm sharing first is Boaz made sure that Ruth's needs were met as we must, uh, I'm sorry, as God makes sure that our needs are met. And the scripture reference was Ruth 2, verse 7 to 16, but also, also Matthew 6. 25 to 34. I would memorize that if I were you. That is the whole passage where Jesus is telling us, do not worry. God will take care of our needs if we seek him first. Okay. Um, secondly, Boaz comforted Ruth as God comforts us. And uh, she shares from Ruth 2 verse 13. Great, great moment there. Because uh, of course, Ruth was scared, you know, and he comforted her and said, don't worry, don't be afraid. And uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 3, we get that same kind of comfort, get our comfort from God. And um, it's awesome. So I'm giving them brief, trying to keep your interest up that you'll read the book too. Um, thirdly, Boaz gave Ruth bread to survive, just as God gave us the bread of life through his son, Jesus. I hope we remember that, that Jesus is the bread of life. And um, without the bread of life, which is Jesus, this life is just not, it's not worth anything. We, we don't get to experience the spiritual health, the, um, the peace that passes understanding, you know, um, the hope that so many just don't have. We, we have that. We have a treasure in Jesus, the bread of life. We have life. We could be dead. I know I would be dead. I had a horrible background. I got in all kinds of trouble before I became a disciple. I was lucky, grateful, not just lucky, grateful that God sent to me a, a, a believer who lived across the street to reach out to me when I was 12 because I got kicked out of my house and I got kicked out of my school because I was ditching and I was high. I was only in sixth grade or seventh grade, sixth grade, I'm pretty sure. And, um, you know, she took me in. But she took me in with conditions. Um, she said, I need to go with her to serve. And I did. And we served the poor, the homeless, the elderly. And, um, and we served the people in her congregation as well. And I learned all kinds of skills. I saw from a different perspective that there's another um, whole population on the planet that are suffering. And here I am 